the Biden administration continues to demonstrate its complete political buffoonery. It's amazing. So a federal judge yesterday ruled, or two days ago, ruled that the Biden mask mandate via the CDC did not comport with the enabling laws of the CDC. So when you create a regulation, there's a very specific process you are supposed to go through with a notice and comment period. It's supposed to be rolled out in advance of the regulation, and then you formally roll out the regulation. Now, if you want to issue an emergency regulation, you can do that, but you can also initiate a, a full formal regulation review period. And so what this allows you to do is you put out the emergency regulation, which only lasts for, say, 60 days. And in that 60 days, you do the notice and comment. And then the minute that the emergency regulation sunsets, then you already have another regulation ready to go. The Biden administration didn't do that. They put in place the CDC regulation forcing everybody on any sort of federal transport to mask. And they did this on an emergency basis to demonstrate that they knew it was an emergency and they didn't bother to do any of the rest of it. So a federal judge struck that down. So the federal judge in Florida made two separate rulings in this one ruling. One was that the CDC didn't follow its own regulatory procedure. That is absolutely true and perfectly clear. The second was that the CDC really did not have the power to do this in general. Now, that one is a little bit more controversial. You can argue maybe the CDC has the power to issue these sort of broad scale statute uh, regulatory restrictions with regard to federal travel, although really that you would think that should be under the FAA's jurisdiction. But it's pretty clear that the judge was correct that the CDC had not followed its own protocols. As soon as this federal ruling came down, There was a a massive level of confusion inside the administration over what to do. Because no one in the administration actually wanted to just acquiesce to the federal judge. But at the same time, they understood that this was a really bad policy. So there was was a bunch of sort of conflict inside the administration. Nobody wanted to be the person who came out and either appealed the decision, which would try and replace the mask mandate and put a new mask mandate in place or come out and just endorse the the judge's decision. So confusion reigned, and it particularly reigned because folks in the media cannot handle this, particularly on MSNBC. There are a bunch of mask forever, COVID zero insane people who have now been infused with panic. And and it's a syndrome at this point. And they become addicted to the panic. And they could not handle the possibility that you shouldn't, you should be able to not mask your two-year-old on a plane. They could not handle it. Over on MSNBC, they were losing their bleep. I mean, just losing it. So, for example, you had MSNBC's Carol Lee saying that Democrats looked weak after Biden didn't do anything about the travel mask ruling. So he had to look strong, strong, force those people to mask. They're trying to walk this line of there are Democrats that I've spoken to who said, look, the president looks weak here. He could have come out and owned this moment, this transition in the country where people are taking off their masks on transportation. He didn't do that. Instead, he's being led by the courts. Um, so instead, what happened again, and this became kind of the talking point. The left was like, why won't Biden do anything? Why won't he protect us? Why? OK, so they all still believe religiously in the cultic lie that Joe Biden was going to protect them from COVID. After more people have died under Biden from COVID than under Trump and Biden had a working vaccine. They still believe that Biden has the magical ability to protect them from COVID by simply issuing federal regulations, which demonstrates the magical thinking that infuses the left. If government says something will happen, it must definitely happen. It'll definitely happen. And then folks on the left started virtue signaling by posting photos of themselves wearing masks. I am a good person. I am a person who still cares about to science. And it, it, up to you. I don't really care. Frankly, it's a great ID badge for who's a COVID crazy person, unless you have some sort of significant underlying condition. Uh, and I mean, like, really, really significant if you're talking about Omicron. So if you if you wish to continue with this, by all means, do so. I'm perfectly happy to walk around society and know immediately who you are with just a moment's glance. But all these people were acting as though they were world-breaking heroes for wearing masks now. Because it, it is worth noting, the left really does not understand the difference between compulsory and optional. They don't understand. For the left... You know, T.H. White, so our third Thursday book club this month, we're doing The Once and Future King. There's a very famous line from The Once and Future King where T.H. White is talking about the nature of fascism. And he says, everything not compulsory is forbidden. Right? So everything is either compulsory or forbidden. Those are the only two categories. Because when it comes to totalitarianism, that's true. Either you are forced to do something or you are forced not to do something, but there's no option in the middle where you could do it or you couldn't do it. So for folks on the left, they literally, do, it, it does not compute to them. That if you remove a mandate, you are now not 
mandating that everybody take off the mask. So they all start tweeting as though they are some sort of like French underground resistance to the evil anti-maskers. So Valerie Jarrett posted a photo of herself. This is a former Obama chief of staff, quote, wearing my mask no matter what non-scientists tell me I can do. Well, I mean, first of all, a lot of scientists tell you you can do it. And you seem to be a non-scientist. And by the way, none of the mask mandates actually mandated that you wear a KN95 or N95 so far as I'm aware. She's wearing, I believe, a KN95 in that particular photo. She actually is one of the lesser crazy people. But again, the, the broader point from the left is that they will not be compelled to. No one's trying to compel you to unmask, you idiots. But for them, if it's not being compelled by government, it simply doesn't matter. And so the scientific crew over at MSNBC, again, and they're just going nuts. MSNBC's Dr. Patel says, you know what you should do? You should really carry extra masks with you. And you should ask all the people around you to mask up, which will make you the most unpopular person on a plane. Now, listen, I've been the most unpopular person on a plane before. Not really because of my politics, but because I have many small children and sometimes they just scream the whole flight. But if you want to be less popular than the person with the screaming child who's changing diapers in the middle of the flight, be the person who carries an extra bag of masks and asks everyone around you to mask up because you're a paranoid lunatic. Here is a Dr. Patel. The best thing they can do, high quality masks, and that when possible, carry some extra masks. I know this sounds crazy, but if you tell someone next you on a plane, pay a 95 and just say, or surgical mask and just say, I've got an elderly mother at home. I've got a child with cancer at home. Will you please do me a favor? Having the people at least closest to you in that row, protecting yourself and them can be the best safety. So carry some extra masks with you. Carry some rapid tests with you if you're traveling. Okay. So it's these crazies who are running the Biden administration. Why? Because it turns out that people were really, really happy about unmasking. There was a video going around yesterday. It was hysterical of a a black flight attendant who is walking down the aisle as the announcement is made, and he literally starts singing out loud that it's time to take the mask off, and people break into wild applause. Here's what it sounded like. (laughs) But the Biden administration can't just take the L, or even the mild W, because if they had just been like, you know what, they're right, you know, it's time to move on, We wouldn't have done it this way, but the truth is we did get past COVID and that was us. They could take like half credit, but they can't even take half credit because they're so in the colons of these people. It's unreal. And these people are, they're lunatics. I got to tell you, Robin Given has an entire piece over at the Washington Post titled, Whoops of Selfish Delight. Whoops of Selfish Delight. For the moment, there are squeals of unbridled delight, which aren't so much a reflection of just how onerous the mask mandate has been, but rather just how childish and selfish so much of the country has been in dealing with it. We are the good people. We're virtuous. It wasn't that we were doing stupid virtue signaling nonsense for years on end. No, we were the good people. We're good. And we're going to continue wearing the mask. We're just, you stop this. Stop it right now. It's, it's the most pathetic thing. Robin Given, social media has been full of examples of airline passengers turning petulant and violent over mask rules. As if in time before masks, people had been able to party like the wolves of Wall Street on planes. And now suddenly they were being forced to strap into a teeny tiny seat with limited legroom and survive on bags of miniature pretzels. Masks are uncomfortable, but there are so many other aspects of flying that have been awful for a very long time. Most of those long-term terrible circumstances resulted from airlines simply trying to raise revenue. Oh, capitalism is to blame. But the shouts of joy are a reminder that after everything people have been through collectively over these past two years, we are emerging from the darkness, still as absorbed by our individual circumstances as ever. We complain bitterly about having to wear a mask as a benefit to others. See, the left loved this. They loved COVID lockdowns. They loved COVID mindset because COVID mindset was the collective, you see. I wore a mask to protect you and you wore a mask to protect me. It's about the signal of it. It's about the fact that if you don't wear the mask, it's because you are a selfish jackass. But I, I am good. I am, I am deserving. I am I'm worthy of the heaven to come. I've earned points in the non-existent governmental afterlife because I've worn that. And not only that, now that I am such a good person, I will force everyone around me to mask. It's not selfish of me to force everybody around me to mask. It's selfish of you to not mask. Very reminiscent of, of left-wing economic policy. It's not selfish of me to insist that you pay all of my bills. That's collectivism, my friend. It is selfish of you to insist that you keep your own money. Okay, so the DOJ didn't have to engage in any of this. The DOJ instead decided that they were going to fight back. Quote, is the Justice Department statement. The U.S. Department of Justice today released the following statement on Health Freedom Defense Fund, Inc. versus Biden. The DOJ and the CDC 
disagree with the district court's decision and will appeal, subject to the DDC, CDC's conclusion that the order remains necessary for public health. The department continues to believe the order requiring masking in the transportation corridor is a valid exercise of the authority Congress has given CDC to protect the public health. So I, I do love that they are now basically going back to the CDC and throwing it at the CDC. That they're kind of have they're kind of splitting the baby here. They're saying we'll only appeal if the CDC says we should appeal. Now we'll see if the CDC doubles down. So all the Biden administration has to do with this federal judge ruling is basically just look the other way. They blew it. They had an opportunity to lead on this thing, and they didn't. Instead, they were so intimidated by their own crazy left-wing base that they were still trying to push mask mandates for two-year-olds on federal flights while relieving Title 42, which basically says that illegal immigrants can't come into the country if they might have COVID. So at the same time that COVID was not an issue on our border, it was an issue on airplanes, which have HEPA filters, and for small children. So Jen Psaki has been asked about all of this, and she just can't, she can't escape it because the logic is inescapable. You guys don't know what you are doing. So Jen Psaki yesterday, she says she's going to continue to advise all Americans to mask on airplanes. But wait, I was told literally yesterday that you have no opinion on masking because you, of course, are not a medical source. She literally said that yesterday in the White House press room because Peter Ducey asked her, why don't we have to mask here? But you're saying that people should mask on airplanes. She's like, well, I'm no doctor. Well, here she is announcing that you should mask on an airplane based on, I don't know, her red hair. Like, I just don't know what she's basing this on. The CDC continues to uh, advise and recommend masks on airplanes. We're abiding by the CDC recommendations. The president is, and we would advise all Americans to do that. Oh, well, you know, she, well, you'd advise, you'd advise. No, no one's taking your advice because your advice is stupid. Also, she was then asked about the fact that there are so many Americans. I mean, there's all sorts of stories of people on planes unmasking and cheering. Because it turns out nobody likes wearing these things. And we were willing to wear them when we thought that we were seriously at risk. It turns out that since the presence of the vaccines, those who are vaccinated don't die. Those who are not vaccinated have a higher chance of dying. Still, the vast majority of them, I mean, like 99% don't die. And also, they chose not to get the vaccine. Okay, but but here she is saying, you know, we can't cite anecdotes. Anecdotes are not data. I, I love this coming from Jen Psaki, whose entire political perspective is anecdotal. All of it. Right? As we'll see in just a moment. When it comes to the left, everything that they do is rooted in anecdotal nonsense, not rooted in data. But here's just anecdotes aren't data. So, you know, if you if you get headaches from from wearing a mask for five hours on a cross country flight and you have to deal with a screaming toddler who's wiping their nose with their mask, that's just anecdotes, man. That is then data. You saw a lot of Americans, you know, immediately pulling off their masks on airplanes, very happy about the change. Uh, is the administration concerned that the, the public is is moving on, you know, without the CDC and uh, that the country is in a different place where the administration is in? Well, I would note, well, I've seen those videos. Anecdotes are not data. Right. Um, and certainly that does tell a part of the story. Um, but we don't make these decisions based on politics or based on the political whims on a plane or even in a poll. Oh, well, um, yeah, uh, except for the fact that nobody wants to do this anymore. Like the polling data show that people are not into the mask mandates. Well, here's the thing. They are in maybe some heavy blue areas. There must be some political incentive here. Either that or the media have these people so wrapped around their little finger that they'll just repeat anything. Eric Adams, the mayor of New York, he says we're still going to do mask mandates on city subways. First of all, you have a better chance at this point, thanks to the presence of Obama County, you probably have a better chance of catching herpes or being stabbed on a city subway in New York or thrown in front of a train than you do of dying because you got COVID on a city subway in New York. But here's Eric Adams. We are going to continue uh, to encourage New Yorkers uh, to He's outdoors. He's in the middle of nowhere. We that we have the authorization to do so. He's literally standing with no one on any side of him wearing a mask. Now, you've seen a lot of videos of Eric Adams in pretty close proximity with people over the past few months wearing no mask, right? But because he's announcing his fealty to the masks, his, his cultic loyalty to the mask, he's going to wear the mask now to prove to you because he is a member of the virtuous. Guys, keep doing this. Seriously, keep it up. You're doing great. Who's got two thumbs and wants you to like and subscribe?